Hey, good evening. How are you? Hope you're enjoying this most beautiful day. It's a beautiful time of the year, isn't it? Spring is about to be here, and we're going to see the mightiness of God, uh, the almightiness of our Heavenly Father, uh, as He brings this earth to uh, a greenness that's already starting. The budding is already starting, but uh, it's going to be full leaf break before long, and there's be a lots of rejoicing as we celebrate along with creation, the resurrection of our Lord. As Easter approaches, the time we celebrate the resurrection as Christians. Uh, thank you for joining us for a few minutes. I just want to talk to you about um, a word that we all need more of. It's called wisdom. Wisdom. Uh, we were studying wisdom last night in our Bible study at church, and there's a couple of verses that kind of hooked on my, my heart as we think about uh, the great need we all have of wisdom. Uh, there's two kinds of wisdom. There's worldly wisdom and there's godly wisdom. James in the third chapter uh, talks about both of those. And he says that natural wisdom or wisdom of the world is devilish and sensual and those kind of things. But he says the wisdom that is from God cometh from above. And we also told in James that when we want wisdom, we ask God for it. And I pray that we all know that we need wisdom. I know I do. The older I get, I seem like the less smart I seem to be and the more mistakes I seem to make. But wisdom is a great guide that God has given us. Um, spiritual wisdom is a great blessing of God. It does come down from Him. And uh, it's kind of like a, a garden, though. you you got to cultivate wisdom. It, it, it's, uh, it's a situation where weeds will grow in our hearts and our lives even after we're saved if we don't deal with them weeds of sin and just laziness and complacency um, hatred and things like that envy jealous covetousness uh, various things that are the seeds of the devil that causes us unrest and affects our fellowship uh, with god so, so we need to cultivate our hearts with, with God's Word, and, and that, is, that is really the ultimate wisdom. Uh, wisdom is defined in the Bible as uh, the beginning of it there, thereof is the fear of the Lord. The more of this book you get in and more you take in, the more wisdom you're going to have. And, and also you're going to find the less sin you're going to have to deal with. The more of God, the less of problems. I mean, not that we won't have them, but they just won't be as big. God is so amazing. The more God we have, the less of the foolishness of the world we'll have to deal with. So, but it's exciting. Wisdom is just an exciting thing. It's not just like academics and learning all the great uh, laws of uh, thermodynamics such as, such as that or, or, or physics or sciences or history. It, it is about God. Wisdom is an everyday relationship with God, how we learn of Him and how we, how we uh, realize, often by our mistakes, uh, that God is right and that we learn from our mistakes. You know, if, if a person says they've never made a mistake, never done anything wrong, they've never done much. Uh, but when we, when we make a mistake, when we learn from them, it, it gives us wisdom. And, and that's a blessing that we need to thank God for. But we need wisdom. There's a lot of people in our world today, especially in our government, and I suppose the governments of the world, that that probably just ought not to be there as far as wisdom goes. They're, they're there because of some other reason, maybe. They've been promoted to that, that site. And I know God ordains powers that be. I sure do. Uh, and we need to pray for our leaders. We need to pray that they have more wisdom. And when I say that, I mean godly wisdom. But there are some foolish decisions made in pretty high places. And uh, there's also some foolish decisions made in pretty low places, like our homes and the situations that we let into our house and by TV and situations like that, um, thoughts in our mind. Wisdom needs to be protected. One of the analogies, though, that God gives to wisdom is what I wanted to say this evening from the book of Proverbs. And it says in verse 13 there, uh, Proverbs 24, My son, eat thou honey, because it is good, and the honeycomb, which is sweet to thy taste. Now then listen to verse 14. It says, So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul, 
when thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. Here we see uh, Solomon comparing uh, wisdom to honey. And when you think about that, I, I've never really thought about it like that, but I think that's a good uh, uh, a comparison, maybe, if you think about an analogy of wisdom and honey. Because honey, you, you just you can't eat too much of it. It's just, it's just so rich and so sweet. It, it just takes a very little bit. So, so it is with wisdom. I mean, we don't need to get so wise that, that we're just flat, don't know how to do anything. I mean, you know, we can be so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good. And yet, wisdom, though, is so needful that that's what sweetens everything in our life. And what a blessing it is to see that. When you think about honey, though, you know, honey takes is a process. The bees make the honey. They, they gather it. There's a lot of work involved and a lot of organization in the beehives. And that's a miracle in itself of how it's all controlled by the queen and how everybody, every bee has their, has their job, has their territory, has their territory. Somebody told me not long ago they saw a, a program on bees and, and this guy was so uh, aware of what's going on in the beehive that he could tell which bees were coming to the hive and which one were leaving. And when the question was asked by the, the, the interviewer how he knew, he said, because the bees coming into the hive have yellow pollen on their legs. They've been out gathering pollen. Uh, that, that's how we need to, to think about our life with God. I mean, we need to be, we need to be, we need to be either going to get wisdom or we need to be bringing it back. And, and how do we find it? Well, a lot like the bees did, you know, they, they found it, you know, in the flowers of life. The flowers of life are the very, uh, things that God gives us in our everyday lives that bloom, the, the spirit of his grace, the fruits of his spirit. And, and you know what? We need to be willing in our lives to, to take time, what is it saying, to smell the flowers? I mean, sometimes we just neglect it. But there, there are flowers blooming in places that nobody sees but God. Uh, I have noticed just riding around the woods here that these little yellow flowers that grow on the vine, they're up in trees in the middle of nowhere, but they're so beautiful. You know, we need to be looking for those kind of things in our life, even in our days where things are not so good. Every day is not a, a day that we can say, man, it's just the best day I've ever had, but we have problems that we have to deal with. But, but there's, a, there's goodness in every day because God is good all the time. And he sends us a day and he sends us those problems so that we can collect wisdom from them. That's, what, that's why they're here, so that we can become more like Jesus Christ, who is the wisdom of all wisdom, uh, the Prince of Peace. Uh, all the government was upon his shoulders. That, that is why it required him to be wise. And, and Solomon, who, who wrote this, remember, he prayed in 1 Kings 3, I believe it was, he said, Lord, I want, I want wisdom. He didn't play for riches or fame. He said wisdom. And God gave him wisdom. Now, what happened to Solomon happens to a lot of us. He started letting other things affect him. He married some, some ungodly women, and they enticed him to serve other gods and just to become a big, big mess. And, and he wrote a lot of good things from it. He gathered some wisdom from that. Uh, you can gather a lot from your mistakes. Solomon did that. Uh, he, he wrote Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. All those were testaments of, of what, what vanity is, the difference in true riches and, and fake riches of this world, and the fact that you can have everything and don't have God and you really won't have anything. I mean, I mean, this is just a no-brainer. We, we should not be so foolish to think we could ever do anything or acquire anything in this life without wisdom and without God. But that's where our wisdom comes from. It's just we want to be smarter than we are, and God has given us that capacity to, to have that. Now, you know, I, I thought about those bees again going out. They're, they're coming back. They're, that's, that's how we need to be in our lives. And you bring it back to the hive, 
that might be your home to the church you you worship God in uh, to your life because because there, there's others that will benefit from your wisdom just just like those those bees that make it and I thought about those bees as they go to different flowers and blooms the trees the plants the crops and all uh, they use those bees as you know to pollinate uh, to make things uh, work better more thriving but but the bees don't really do it for the pollinating the pollinating is a consequence of the honey honey I mean they're getting the pod but they're making honey that that is what that's how it is that is should be our lot in life that, that it ought to be about how can we glorify God the wisest thing we can do in our life will be the thing that will most glorify God and if we can really say, if you want to do a, a, a litmus test of whatever we do and how, how sweet it is, honey-wise, wise to wisdom, is how does this glorify God? If it's not, then we don't need to fool with it. Um, but, but even the things we, we think about that are devastating to our lives, that we think, you know, some mistake we've made, some horrific circumstance of life, some loss of a loved one tragically, or something that just shakes our life and re remolds us almost. I mean, just there's things that happen. We see it around our lives. We've had it here in this community. I, I imagine you have wherever you are. But you know, I thought about Samson uh, in the Old Testament. He here's a guy that goes out and, and a lion attacks him. Well, si Samson, you know, the Nazarite was strong. He he conquered that lion and he killed that lion and left his carcass there in the desert. We come back a little while later, and I guess, you know, in the desert, things don't decompose as quickly maybe, but what happens, there's a beehive in that lion's carcass, and, and Samson gets honey out of it in the very lion that attacked him, that could have destroyed him. See, so you can get you can get from wisdom. You can draw wisdom out of the most horrific situations in your life. And you remember that story. I, I I don't have time to deal with it, but but Samson goes back with honey dripping in both hands to show his parents. You know, and he, and he makes this riddle, and and you know it, it was amazing that nobody could figure that out. The, the riddle he made about the honey and the eater and the, making the sweet out of the the eater became sweeter. I don't have it all right, but anyway, it was a great analogy of what Samson did to that line, and, and it had to do with wisdom. So, thinking about wisdom in honey, it's a process. It takes time to make it. Same way with wisdom. You know, you don't, you don't go to college to learn godly wisdom. Now, Jonah, uh, he thought he could get around God that's not the smartest thing to do. Don't ever try to run from God. See, he, he goes, God says, go to Nineveh. Jonah says, no, I'm going to Tarshish. He sees a boat that's got an opening for somebody to help him fish. He said, well, that's a sign I'm doing what's right. Be careful when you start looking for those kind of signs. Sometimes the devil opens doors too. And so what he did, when God got through it with him, you know the story. He gets in that boat and the storm comes and they figure out, why they're happening, the other fishermen did. So they throw Jonah overboard at Jonah's request, really. Jonah ends up in the fish's belly, and he likes it to hell, and spends three days and three nights there. Well, that Foyle University, so to speak, learned Jonah a lesson. That's what wisdom does. See, he goes to Nineveh then, and he makes it in a day's journey. He, he was not fooling around now. God is serious. God is serious about wisdom. That's how we need to take God, because if we see God, see wisdom is having a reverential fear of God. That is, what God says ought to go. It does go. It is the final word. Thus saith the Lord. It's not just a multiple choice or, or you know, just do what you can. It's what God says. And his promises, his, his precepts, his principles are all in his word. And we need to go by that. That's where we build our wisdom. Uh, Honey, too, is, is, is something that uh, not only takes a long process, you know, it doesn't take a lot of it to really make a difference, um, but, but honey is, 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 is something that is medicinal. It is, it is a, a sweetness that 
that brings health into our minds. It's a, it's a great blessing from God. And that's what God's word is. I mean, not only spiritually, but, but physically, emotionally, uh, the health. I know uh, every morning for the last several years, I eat some oatmeal. And, I, and I, the first thing I do after I get the oatmeal cooked is, is put honey in it. I put some honey in it. And uh, I, I thought about that after I looked at these verses. I mean, every day we need to start off with a little bit of wisdom. Uh, some days I, I don't act like I've got much, but nevertheless, in the back of my mind, I know that God's ways are right. And, and we need to ponder the path, the Bible says, that we take. And that's what wisdom does. It causes us to think about what we're doing, where we're we going to go that day, what we're going to see, who we're going to visit, what we're going to say, how we're going to react and respond, because we will be challenged every day. Uh, the devil tempted Jesus in the wilderness, and Jesus had the honey that was necessary. He had the wisdom. What did he say? It is written. That's the word of God. That's the little bit of honey we need every day. And so, and so Sodom is saying here, so shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. See, that's soul food. That's what wisdom is, just like that honey. And so I'm, I pray the Lord will bless us to, to rejoice in the fact that, that God has given us this. You know, he's, he also, when you think about honey and wisdom, uh, the promised land in the Old Testament, you remember God tells Israel, he's already got the land ready. He says, there's a land of milk and honey. And it's the sweetness of that. That's the promised land. Now, that's not heaven, but we're living in the promised land in the kingdom age of God's word right now. And we need to, we need to take the honey. We need to taste the honey as we go, the sweetness of this life. And it just gets sweeter as days goes by. That's what Jesus is. The, the more we love him, the more we go love him. That's the sweetness of God. Uh, may the Lord bless and keep you close to him as we think about the sweetness of God and the honey and the wisdom that goes with it, because that's exactly what it is. And whether it's the hurts of our life, uh, sometimes those beast things around those honey hives, uh, beehives, you know, I imagine many a beekeeper had to deal with that. But nevertheless, that's where the sweetness come from. Sometimes those stings in our life are what really brings out the sweetness in the end. And I know that God will be honored and glorified when we always attest that, that we do want to know more about him, that, that we believe that, that there's nothing sweeter than Jesus. There's nothing greater than his word. There's nothing more needful. So whatever, whatever you eat in your life, I'm not talking about physical food. I mean your life, your life's work, your conversation. You put a little honey in it, a little wisdom in it, a little godly wisdom, and that will carry us where we need to go, and we'll bless God all the way. Would you bow with me? Lord, we thank you for wisdom. We need more of it. We pray that you'd forgive us of our foolishness and fill us, Lord, with grace and mercy. Lord, help us to see the sweetness that you've given us through Christ Jesus, our Lord, that our sins are forgiven that we, Lord, have the necessary needs that we have to have in our life. And your wisdom mixed with whatever we have to take in, Lord, will make all the difference. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for all you're providing for us and all of our needs. Forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.